We are about to playtest Daggerheart. I've printed out the quick start guide along with a bunch of other stuff. I've got my hope dice, I've got my fear dice, I've got a packet of Oreos and a bottle of gin. Let's go! So before the adventure started, I printed everything from the Daggerheart Quick Start Adventure, which also includes resources for teaching the game. So every character for the pre-made adventure comes with a pre-made character sheet, so you don't need to worry about setting that up on your first time. This is what the character sheet looks like. By far my favorite thing about this is the way they've done it is if you pull out the sheet, down here shows you everything you need to know about this character sheet. So this shows your domain, this shows your evasion, and then you do the same on the other side. This is just a really cool way of understanding the character sheet if you haven't watched the introductory videos. So all around, these pre-made character sheets are pretty good. Except this one has a small graphical error where the text is repeated across two boxes. F-tier product, literal, unusable garbage. Honestly though, the only thing these character sheets actually failed at was explaining experience. Experiences are supposed to work kind of like skills in D&D, where you spend one hope to add a plus one or plus two on a check that is relevant to your character's backstory. The cool thing is, you can decide what your character character's experiences are, giving you some creative control. On the pre-made character sheets though, they just list some experiences, like nature's friend, and don't actually tell players what that means or how to use it. Experience in Daggerheart also has nothing to do with traditional RPG experience, like how much XP do you get for defeating a monster, which only makes it more confusing. It would have been much better to have given one example experience for each player, explained exactly what that is and when you might use it, and then leave the second one blank for them to create themselves. Instead, they just give you them and don't really explain them. And the same is true for the domain cards. Every character sheet comes with the cards specifically that that character is gonna need, but because I'm a little bit extra, I went ahead and I printed out every single card in the game so we can get a feel for how it'd be like to have a full deck. So one of the coolest things they've done is they've included these little cutout tokens, so you can cut these out and stand them up. But again, being extra, we just 3D printed our own minis. Now I had to cut out all the cards for us to use. Printing everything for this adventure cost about £36 or $46, but I chose to print the maps and cards on card in colour. If you did this with the absolute minimum stuff required, it's only about 50 pages of black and white A4 that you need to print. Okay, so I'm just done cutting all these out. That took about 13 minutes to cut out all the ancestry and community cards and all the first level domain cards. So they give you maps to run the adventure with, but they kind of suck. They're just black and white and a bit small. Um, so I just printed off a couple of Che Pepu maps on card uh, to run the adventure with. It's set in a forest, so I just found two forest maps. Uh, looks really good, let's do this. Everything was set up. The players were here. I was using dry erase cards for my fear tokens. Let's actually play Dagger Hearts and talk about the ups and the downs. Oh. Hello? I'm gonna freaking kill you! Grandma? What? No, no, I'm a criminal! Really? Cause you sound exactly like my grandma. Shut up, you idiot! Yeah, that, that's her all over. It's like she's in the room. You're gonna gather every TTRPG map you have and leave them in an unmarked suitcase beneath the bridge or I'll kill you! Why? What? Why do you want my maps? You can get over 4,000 stunning maps from Che Peku. Just sign up on the Patreon and you can access the full back catalog immediately. No way, really? Yeah, maps for everything, with variations on times of day, setting, season. I'm using Che Peku maps for the one shot I ran for this video. Wow, you know you're all right, kid. Uh, you don't really sound like my grandma when you say that. Shut up! God, you're annoying! Oh yeah, there she is. Grab over 4,000 stunning battle maps for just $5 by signing up to Che Peku on Patreon using the link below. Take your games to the next level and inspire your players and your world. That's 4,000 plus maps, only $5. Play with Che Peku using the link below. Okay, I just got back from running Daggerheart and I have a few notes. The adventure itself is good. It took about three hours to run, including the pre-game stuff where we went through everyone's character sheet and explained the rules. They give you this kind of script to read through with the entire table, which takes everyone through attack rolls and the other core mechanics you need to play. Let's start off with the positives. The cards are fun. I was hesitant on these initially, but having them on the table was useful and didn't clutter up the game. 
It is a little odd that the information you need to play is stored in multiple places. Some of it's on your character sheet and some of it's on your cards, but having the cards to rifle through when it's not your turn is handy. The cards aren't just a gimmick. They kind of make Daggerheart feel like a board game with all the tokens that you have as well. And this might sound like a small thing, but trust me, when we get to the problems with Daggerheart, you'll see how important that actually is. Combat was smooth, but I was playing with pros. These people get role-playing games. Everyone was confident and respectful, and it flowed effortlessly. I can understand how a group with some less confident players and some less socially aware players might struggle without the rigid boundaries of initiative, though. For us, we had a great time, and even though my players rolled with fear a lot, they still absolutely dominated. Honestly, this is probably the biggest difference between D&D and Daggerheart that a lot of people miss, myself included, and that is that combat is way less swingy. In D&D, level 1 parties die constantly. A critical hit here, a couple of misses there, and you're done. In Daggerheart, the GM can't crit, so that's not a problem, and you can plan out combat really well because of how the HP system works. You can guess pretty accurately how long a combat encounter is going to take because the variance on damage players can deal is only between 0 and 3. Generally speaking, as long as you give the enemies and the players the same amount of actions, which which is what the action tracker is for, the group with the most hit points are going to win. Of course, you can get unlucky, but you have to get way more unlucky in Daggerheart to actually TPK your party with this system. And with early game D&D in mind, do you remember your first D&D game? Because I do, and it sucked. D&D <laughs> is way more complicated for beginners just to get going. And in Daggerheart, all the players felt cool. In D&D, people often start the game at level 3 or level 5, just to get into the meat of their character builds. But every player, when we played Daggerheart, felt mechanically complete. They felt powerful and cool. They didn't feel like a work in progress, like a level 1 paladin or wizard does in 5e. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this, because that is a huge win for Daggerheart that's hard to get right. Like, they nailed this. But here's something they don't nail. Missing an attack in Daggerheart probably sucks even more than missing in D&D. The encounters in the quick start session were all pretty easy to hit. I think maybe two people missed all session, but think about this. When you miss in this game, you've used an action, which means you've given the enemies an action to attack you back while achieving nothing. Unlike D&D, where you're rewarded for doing as much as possible on your turn, this is a game where doing nothing is surprisingly optimal a lot of the time, especially in higher difficulty games. Obviously, we play for fun, and it's fun to take actions, but it's weird to have a system where technically the best thing you can do in combat is not engage at all. Example, one of the enemies in the quick start adventure resists physical damage, and it also has a very nasty attack that can completely incapacitate a player. Therefore, if you're a physical damage dealer, it's technically better not to do anything and let the spellcasters take all the actions, because if you do, you're not going to deal much damage and you're giving the enemy an action to potentially take someone out altogether. I don't think there should be a mechanic in a game that rewards players for not engaging. Daggerheart wants you to engage, so this feels like an oversight. I think the MCDM system has the best idea here, where no matter what you do on your turn, you always deal some damage. Maybe enemies in Daggerheart could have stress as well as hit points, and even when you miss them with an attack, you still deal one stress. Then after taking three stress, they start taking damage from those small attacks attacks, just to give the players something, you know? Now, maybe this next thing is an upside, maybe it's a downside, but my players pretty much used hope and stress any time they could, and we still ended up with tons of hope left over at the end of the session, nowhere near maxed out stress, and no one even below half hit points. I also ended up with a ton of unspent fear cards, and I was throwing these things down. Five players means a lot of rolls, which means a ton of hope 
and fear generated. One way to solve this excessive resource problem is to beef up the combo mechanic, where you spend three hope to act alongside an ally. The dagger heart system basically comes down to you narrating your turn alongside someone else and having a slightly higher chance to hit. It needs to do more and have more uses per session to encourage players to burn through lots of hope at a time. So that's hope, let's talk about fear. The looseness of the fear mechanic is pretty heavy on the GM. Like a player rolls with fear and the game says, okay GM, raise the stakes. So you're the GM and you do that. Maybe you bring in another monster to fight or one of your monsters does a special attack. But what happens after people roll with fear six times in a row, which happened in our session? Like I've DM'd thousands of games over the years and Daggerheart had me scrambling in a way I haven't done in years for D&D to come up with stuff to happen. I didn't want to just keep repeating myself and you can only raise the stakes so far with fear before it starts to lose a little magic, right? My philosophy is that the faster combat is, the more exciting it is, because it's happening to you right now. The less dead time per player, the better. Daggerheart's open initiative kind of helps with that, because the ball is getting passed around constantly and people are paying attention to potentially jump in, but the fear system, which is supposed to make things more exciting, actually slows the game down. Every time you roll, good or bad, the GM has to narrate something. Maybe they even have to put a new token onto the board. Sometimes it's better to just hit, deal damage and throw the ball to someone else. Now for the elephant in the room. The rulebook for the Daggerheart beta is nearly 400 pages long. It's also dense, it's almost all text, and the fact there's any art here at all is awesome. There is clearly love poured into this system, but the idea that Daggerheart is some rules light, easy to get your head around book is just not true. This is a thick system, and I feel like a lot of the work falls on the GM. As a GM for this session, I had to work a lot harder than I do for normal games of D&D. I also interact with the TTRPG community a lot through this channel, and I get a sense that what people are really looking for right now is a lighter system. That is not Daggerheart. <laughs> Daggerheart might have a little too much chaff. For example, a lot of the mechanics in the book that I really like, like the open initiative system and encouraging players to take an active role in building the world, those are just fairly well-known modern TTRPG game master techniques. I guess what I'm saying is, some of the best bits of Daggerheart are things that game masters have been doing for years with other systems, which means they're not really going to be a selling point. So let's talk about the selling point, because when we sat down to play immediately, everyone was laughing and joking and role-playing and having a great time. But looking back on it, the mechanics didn't really play much of a part in that. Like, it might as well have been a game of D&D. I don't think I've ever appreciated before this just how much a game's setting actually gives it its whole identity. Daggerheart and D&D share a setting. A bunch of classes have the same names and very similar mechanics. A bunch of races are just renamed versions of existing D&D races. When you're running a game and role-playing in the moment, the best mechanics are ones that you forget about. And because beneath the mechanics, this is basically the same as D&D, the perfect game of Daggerheart Heart is just doing D&D. That's why the cards and tokens are essential. Even if I think the tokens are kind of dumb, I just tracked the action points with a dry erase whiteboard. These are the elements that give Daggerheart that tiniest bit of a different vibe to D&D. Honestly, I think Daggerheart is really good. The quick start adventure gets people playing the game really fast and it's fun from level one. But it strikes me as an equal to D&D 5e, not an evolution. I think DC 20 by the Dungeon Coach, which I'll link below, feels much more like taking D&D to the next level. Daggerheart feels like a lateral move. Luckily though, Daggerheart does much better than D&D at the other things. The art is great, much better than Watsy's D&D art, the adventure was really well presented, they gave a bunch of stuff away for free, and they've got the backing of Critical Role! They don't need to be better than D&D, just being as good at a time when millions of people are actively trying to find ways to not give Watsy money and support, is good enough, but the passion and care they've put into Daggerheart is clear, so I don't think Daggerheart are gonna be satisfied with it's as good as 5e. They will want to be the best 
ever. That's what I set out to do anytime I design anything, and I would not trust a designer who settled for anything less. Daggerheart needs more stuff to give it an identity beyond D&D, and if they're not gonna upgrade the setting to take it beyond Lord of the Rings style fantasy, I would lean in to the cards. To my mind, that is the secret source, and if they can lean into that more, then they'll have not only a hit, but something that will really elevate the whole TTRPG scene for a long time. Remember, if you want more Daggerheart stuff, tell me. Leave a like, leave a comment, because I'm happy to do more alongside the usual D&D stuff if you want it. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.